Well, Chris, thanks for joining us. When um, we started looking at the idea of attendance, this very basic principle of getting kids into school, uh, APS, um, their numbers have actually been improving. Last year, it was about a little under 13%. The year before, it was a little bit more. The year before, a little bit more than that. So you're having some success. Yeah, um, truancy has been an issue, not just statewide, but nationally. And um, we do know that if kids aren't in school, they can't learn. And so trying to deal with that and figure out um, what to do to help get truant kids back in school and keep them there is um, really important. It seems driven by a number of factors. Uh, income seems to be a, a pretty important one. And in a state like ours, I can only imagine that takes an outsized role. Well, I think that there are many factors. And so we have a project that we're beginning to implement a pilot program to really dig down to the why behind truancy. And some of those things may be systematic wise, but mostly it's going to be individual why. Individual with the student, individual with the student and their family. Why is the kid not coming to school? And until you know that, you really can't address the issue. That's all you're addressing is the problem. You can't address what's causing the problem. You said it's going to be 14 um, schools when we had talked a little bit earlier um, throughout APS. Um, all high schools, or what's this going to no, look like? No, the 14 schools are a mixture of elementary, middle, and high, and it's actually spread out across the district, so it's not one area of the city versus another area. It's looking at a modified case management approach, and so um, taking um, kids at five unexcused absences and bringing them in figuring and their families in and figuring out, digging down to the why behind it. And I would actually say the whys because it's probably more than one reason. Okay. Uh, kids don't live in a vacuum. It's probably not one reason. There may be multiple reasons. And then coming up with an intervention plan that everybody agrees to. The school agrees to, the parents agree to, the student agrees to, that this is the plan to, to get the child back in school and to keep them there. The way this looks to a student or a family, must that has to be the hardest part of your job when you have to go to someone and say, hey, you aren't following the rules. The law forces you in New Mexico to do that. Um, at five unexcused absences, you have to step in, and at 10, they're considered habitually truant. What are those exchanges like with parents? Is there a lot of pushback? This isn't a punitive. It's a positive, saying we want you to come in. We want to engage in a conversation around this. We want to figure out what's going on and to see what we can do to help you and your, your child um, get back into school. It, it's a different conversation than saying, if you don't come, then we're going to do X, Y, and Z. Uh, inter early intervention is at five unexcused absences before they're down to 10, which now they're habitually truant. And that's a whole different ball game when you get there, and it's a whole different ball game educationally. Once a child's missed that much school, even if we get them back, getting them caught up is, is harder. It's much harder, and sometimes it's not possible, depending on where it is in the school year. And so we don't want to lose kids. We want to get them back sooner. We want to work on uh, with the parents and figure out what to do, and hopefully to install um, a, a vision that school is important and every day matters, so you have to be there. It all counts. Right. What's out there in the community, um, whether it's individuals, programs that are set up, what helps you get your hooks back into those kids and get them interested? We've actually mapped our school and community resources. So, you know, we could do a mapping of Albuquerque and all the resources there, but if you're down in the southeast heights and the only resource you need is up in the northeast heights, chances are it's, it's unaccessible. Okay. And so what we've done is done some mapping around the school community. So when the teams come together and meet with the family, they actually have a book of resources in that area that they can refer to, that they can talk about. Did you know that this existed here? And parents say, I didn't even know that existed. From a parental perspective, that has to be maybe a little bit refreshing. What do you tell those parents who are like, I don't know what to do. I've got my hands full. I can't you know, be driving around at 1030 in the morning looking for my kid. Mm -hmm. Well, I think that's the whole um, idea of the pilot is to do it a case management. The team that they're coming to is called their health and wellness teams. And so they're they're coming together with a group of people in the school that um, can help them. So it's the counselor, the nurse, um, teachers can be part of that, administrators, depending on the individual kid and the capacity of the school, there are different people that can assist them. Um, they may have a, a social worker already assigned to that child, and so the social worker might be at the table. Um, so there's different ways, and so it's a group of people. It's not just one person trying to figure out, well, I can't be doing that, or maybe my issue is 
I have to leave early in the morning to get off to work and there's no one there to make sure my kid gets off to school. So what can we do to help you? Is there somebody else in your life that might be able to, that doesn't leave as early to work that can show up to make sure your kid got off to school? Until you know the why, you can't figure out what are the possibilities. And it, sort of on a parallel track, what are systematic issues? Are we going to see a huge number of kids that this is the why? And is it something that the school, that we as a district can deal with? Or is it something that we reach out to the community and say, look, this is like a huge number of the reasons. We need your help, community. We need to figure out what can we do for community supports, because if this is the reason kids aren't coming to school, we all need to step up. It's going to be great to see some of those solutions and, and, and see what you find out over this next year. Chris, thanks for coming in. Sure, thank you. This program is part of American Graduate. Let's make it happen. A public media initiative made possible by the Corporation for Public Broadcasting.